In the history of video games, there are countless examples of entire genres owing their existence to one defining title. Before we called them first person shooters, there were Doom clones. Then there's that particular breed of procedurally generated exploration games we call roguelikes. And of course, who can forget the recent phenomenon of rock hard action RPG games under the moniker Soulsborne? But can a genre find its roots not with a style of gameplay, but with a protagonist? Following his introduction in Super Mario Land 2, The Six Golden Coins, Wario became Nintendo's most experimental platform mascot. Deviating from the Super Mario template, Wario games could mess with standardised elements like an end flagpole, power-ups and even health. But one unifying feature across all these games was, as you'd expect, the man himself. A heavyweight bully with a loss for treasure, Wario uses his super strength and resilience to do much more than Super Mario could in a quest to line his pockets with riches. This idea evolved over the course of seven years and several games, with his humble side-scrolling beginning in Wario Land 1 paving the way for the open-world Wario Land 3. This was later refined and defined as uh, arguably his greatest achievement, Wario Land 4. There is a through line to all these releases, however. The first Wario Land game stayed very close to the original Super Mario Land formula, but put more of a focus on finding treasure in a level and getting as much coin as possible. In fact, you can't complete a level without at least 10 on your person. Wario Land 2 then introduced a wrinkle to the formula by removing the penalty of lives and health. Rather, losing fortune is Wario's greatest threat. Levels were still linear, but bottomless pits and one-hit kills were gone, as was the traditional need to find an exit. Instead, you may need to find a chicken, or turn off a big tap. This expanded with the third numbered Wario release, where exploration was put more at the forefront. Rather than there being only one goal, levels now had a couple of objectives each. Four chests with four keys apiece. All of these ideas would coalesce in Wario Land 4, where you're still expected to comb these enormous levels, looking for four chests and even a key, but you're doing so at a much quicker pace. It introduced elements like building momentum to destroy heartier blocks, and even Metroid-style escape sequences back through a level, to encourage this faster play. And yet, all these different tweaks added more dimension to Wario, who went from a piff hat wearing explorer to a reluctant hero in it for fast cash. By making him heartier, the developers could turn him into a cartoon character, who deforms and transforms into monstrous new shapes that adds to the platform puzzle solving something they'd unlikely do with Super Mario, but Wario being such a heel, he was the perfect putz. Following the release of Wario Land 4, Nintendo ended up using Wario as the franchise starter for an even more experimental series of games. WarioWare Inc. saw the character's greed seep into the world of video games, with Wario taking on a producer's role to finance a suite of microgames that maximise quantity at the expense of length. In spite of WarioWare's success, there has been the yearning for making Wario a protagonist again. Nintendo may not have been interested in improving on Wario Land 4, but many developers took their stab at it. Treasure attempted to translate his gameplay to the third dimension with Wario World. Goodfield stuck close to Wario Land 4's design with a revamped look for the Wii title, Shake It. Finally, developer Susik would try to create a new take on the Wario formula with Master of Disguise. Yet, for many reasons, none of these games managed to succeed or even match the quality of the titles that came beforehand. It seemed that Nintendo were the only ones with the right formula for creating starring vehicles for Wario, and they weren't interested in doing so anymore. But it's been a long time since Wario Land 4. 20 years, in fact. And in that time, some who grew up with Wario have seized the opportunity to create new titles that seek to put him back in the limelight. Today, I'd like to focus on three of them. Anton Ball Deluxe, Pizza Tower, and Treasure Tech. These are all in various states of development at the time of this video's publishing, but I believe they're the closest we've seen to capturing the Wario spirit in recent memory. So, what makes these games the next frontier? in the genre of Wario likes. Perhaps the first example I've seen of a developer creating a game that evokes the era of the Game Boy Advance 
Anton Ball Deluxe is built out of memory fragments that anyone who owned the 32-bit handheld could immediately reminisce over. His gameplay is a mix of Wario Land 4's fluid platforming, mixed with a gameplay of Mario Bros. A game so ubiquitous due to it being included in almost every Mario game released on the system. One extra wrinkle to the affair is Breakout. With a titular Anton or one of his three other grotesque cohorts, the aim of the main mode is to destroy walls of coloured blocks using a pinball. What trajectory that pinball takes and how fast it moves is down to using Anton to show the barge and bounce it away from the void behind him. The thesis of Anton Ball Deluxe is that you should replace the paddle in Breakout with Wario, and it manages to make a pretty convincing argument for that. It turns the classic puzzle action game into something even more thrilling, because there's uncertainty you'll be able to hit the ball, and being able to give it a really solid thwack is far more satisfying than the usual ricochet off a flat surface. But there's more. A second mode included in Anton Ball Deluxe more closely channels Mario Bros, and instead of adding the wrinkle of Breakout, pairs it up with Dodgeball. Throwing this projectile is your only means of staggering enemies, opening them up either for a shoulder barge or another throw of the ball to take them off the field. Unlike the Breakout inspired mode, this is a lot easier to play with, because although your movements are fluid, the weight of a Wario character is a better fit for action on a horizontal plane, versus the trickier prospect of dealing with a small, fast moving object on a vertical plane. As a note, both modes are built for multiplayer something that none of the previous Wario games have. It elevates it from being just a puzzle platformer into what could be considered a sports game. Although it doesn't quite channel his lust for treasure, Anton Ball Deluxe elicits Wario's attitude, and it's prevalent from the opening moments of the game. A few borrowed sound effects does help it make a good first impression, but the game's original graphics and story matched perfectly with its familiar source material. Anton himself wouldn't look out of place as a character in Wario's world either. And what ties the package together is an anarchic tone that fits the cutscenes of WarioWare and the more offbeat graphics of Wario Land 4's music player. What cements Anton Ball Deluxe as a great Wario-like is the fact that it found a new way to carry the Wario spirit into another genre. Although I am sure the developers would have the ability to create a platforming game in the style of Wario Land 4, by opting instead to use that game's control kit for a completely different style of gameplay shows just how flexible it can be. The fact that it translates over so well shows just how tuned in the developers were to what made it work in the first place. Wrapped in a style that evokes these games without completely aping them, Anton Ball Deluxe manages to refresh a well-worn arcade classic by transforming it into a Wario-like. For those that keep one foot in the enormous world of game development, Pizza Tower is what immediately comes to mind at the mention of Wario-like. For good reason, of course. Since 2018, the developers behind Pizza Tower have been slowly cooking up something that channels the fluid platforming and bold designs of Wario Land 4, seasoned liberally with influences like Ren and Stimpy and Earthworm Jim. While the former game pushed its character design beyond what Nintendo did in its standard platforming games, Pizza Tower really ratchets up the gross out style into something completely its own, and totally evocative of its 90s influences. Pizza Tower is perhaps the closest gameplay wise to Wario Land 4. As the pizza guy, you must navigate a labyrinthian level to collect items and defeat enemies. There's not four chests, but rather five pizza toppings you need to find before you progress. In this demo version, they all add up to a final grade, but in a full release it's likely they'll be your means to unlock later levels. At the level's end, a countdown kicks in, and the pizza guy must rush all the way back to the entrance, much like the frog switch of Wario Land 4. Like that frog switch, certain platforms will be turned on and off, adding a new challenge in your manic pursuit back. Along the way, grotesque transformations can befall the pizza guy, slowing him down and sometimes opening in a new opportunity. Although the pizza guy is not a heavyweight bully, but instead an Italian stereotype on the verge of a massive heart attack, he performs all the bold, splashy actions Wario is known for, but with even more exaggerated animation. Pizza Tower is a scrappy, punk rock take on a character that was already considered scrappy and punk rock within its own corporate structure. It manages to become a Wario-like, not just in its attempt to be a spiritual successor to Wario Land 4, 
but also in growing out Wario's style into something more sophisticated. The Pizza Guy could be a character in Wario's world, but in the world of Pizza Tower he can be even more animated and exaggerated. Mechanically however, it does build on the momentum system of Wario Land 4. Blasting through levels is encouraged by a huge VCR style fast forward meter that tracks how quickly the Pizza Guy is moving. And while there's plenty of obstacles that are designed for you going at max speed, you'll want to replay levels in order to blast from one end to the other without coming to a stop, almost like an infinite runner. If we were to make a blender pitch, it's Wario Land 4 with a little more Sonic the Hedgehog in it, best exemplified when the pizza guy tucks into a little ball to smash through ankle high obstacles. Its grading might be built around how many important things you find in a level, but how fast you get back to the start can have a definite knock against a final score. It's still early days for the project, and the developers are likely to keep applying spit and polish to the underlying gameplay, but Pizza Tower's most exciting potential is how far they can push their main character, coming up with even weirder transformations and animations than Wario could get away with in his own games, with an aesthetic that moves beyond the square nature of Wario's platforming games into more abstract territory. When you imagine a Wario game, chances are it'd be a side-on 2D action game. Anton Ball Deluxe and Pizza Tower very much fit that definition. But Treasure Tech instead applies Wario as a formula to another genre-defining game. Doom. How exactly do these two opposing game designs meld? Well, better than you'd expect. Doom is a lot of things, including fluid and aggressive combat that compares well with Wario's own offensive capabilities. A change in perspective hasn't changed much of that, with heavy hits and enemy throws feeling great in a first person perspective. The sprawling level design of all the Wario games also fits with the sprawling 3D puzzle boxes of Doom, where the exit isn't immediate but you're keen to explore. Perhaps the only feature the two games don't originally have in common is Wario's obsession for collecting treasures. And yet, that also translates perfectly well into Doom, by having coins spill out of downed enemies, as well as placing treasure as pickups and in secret areas, and having that treasure in turn feed into a shop that improves your starting statistics. But the biggest tweak to the Doom formula to make it a true Wario-like is in how it tweaks the Doom guy. Compared to other Doom games, he has been buffed to absurd proportions here, and while not quite invincible, he instead has a hearty health pool much like Wario did in his fourth outing. Worrying about cover or ammo aren't concerns here, turning the once threatening forces of hell into cartoonish punching bags. And then alongside Doom's requisite health and armor meters, Treasure Tech introduces momentum. An orange bar that swings back and forth depending on your speed is a very technical take on Wario Land 4's barging mechanics, where building up enough momentum allows you to plow through enemies and enhance your normal attacks. It's a cool inclusion to Doom that encourages faster and rougher play, a more intrinsic way to do so compared to the extrinsic glory kill system of Doom 2016. And then finally, the developers made sure to apply some of that Wario absurdity to Doom's roster of heavy weapons. There's a starting pistol with absurd kickback, and a railgun that shoots bees. Treasure Tech then almost makes Wario the protagonist of Doom, and that is quite obvious aesthetically. The user interface and new items all look ripped right out of the Wario Land game. Yet the environments you're traversing and the enemies you're fighting look exactly like they did in Id's 1993 game. There's something fun about this clash of styles, as it feels like these monsters that we were paying on Nightmare difficulty before can't quite prepare themselves for the absurdity of Wario. Seeing this ray trace world through his first person perspective, you're encouraged more so to play in his headspace. By playing up the platforming aspects of Doom, Treasure Tech makes the fast-paced exploration of Wario Land 4 work. Chaining together your barge mechanics and jumps lets you cross enormous gaps you couldn't at base speed, actively encouraging you to move at breakneck pace as much as possible. The ported over frog switch only amplifies that, 
and the blocks that change a level layout during these escape sections. A countdown in a Doom game isn't something I've seen before, and I'm shocked it's not in the base game because it works really well as a gimmick to get you to remember the way you came. Treasure Tech is the best of the Wario likes so far because it combines two great tastes together near flawlessly. Doom is considered by many a perfect game because any additions to its design would be superfluous, yet decades of wads have challenged that idea. Treasure Tech is the rare wad that does so much new, and yet it all cohesively sticks together, enhancing the tone of the base Doom into something completely new, yet equivocally great. Yet, as a Wario-like, it channels the character into a new style of gameplay without losing anything that made him an appealing platforming protagonist. It goes to show that even if he's not seen from a side-on perspective, Wario can work in whatever starring vehicle you give him. Right now, the only downside of Treasure Tech is that there's not enough of it. A full campaign is in the works, but it will be some time after this video before we'll see it. I recommend to follow the developer of Treasure Tech on Twitter for updates, because this really is something special. Not just as an excellent example of a Wario-like, but as something I'd recommend to those who want to change from the usual first-person shooter. As demonstrated, the future of Wario likes is bright. These three games show the versatility of the Wario genre so far, porting his character into different genres or finding a way to enhance his qualities for a new audience. The most exciting aspect of these Wario likes is that, due to their sheer level of quality, it's likely they'll inspire their own imitators. Game design is iterative. After all, it took four mainline Wario games to reach the heights of his Game Boy Advance outing. And while Nintendo haven't been interested in crafting a worthy successor, it's very likely we might see one come out of this rich development space. But I'm only scratching the surface of what's out there. All three of these games are well known enough for me to find them, and it's a given that there's indie titles out there that have done their own interesting take on the Wario-like. If you know any games that should be considered part of this new genre, I'd love to hear more in the comments below. I'd also love to know whether you've tried any of these games yourself and what you thought of them. For now, I've been James D, and I'll see you all in the next upload.